On September 26, 2014, in Iguala, Guerrero, Mexico, 43 students from the Ayotzinapa Teacher School were kidnapped on their way to protest against the wife of the mayor of Iguala during a political event in her honor. Both the mayor, Jose Luis Abarca, and his wife, Maria de los Angeles Pineda, have been accused of ordering the local police to abduct the students and turn them over to members of a local drug cartel called Guerreros Unidos. Allegedly, the students were then tortured and burned alive. To date, only the remains of one student have been identified. Recently, I went to an art gallery in Barrio Logan where local artists put together an exhibition themed around the plight of the 43 students. I found it to be a unique opportunity to hear the artists' opinions on the disappearance of the students and allow them to voice their solidarity with the people of Mexico. It is a huge different group of artists, um, very, very multi-generational, very diverse group of artists that um, have all banded together for this cause. And so to see everybody from, um, you know, everybody that we already show with and plus so many others to band together of so many different generations was really amazing um, for us all to stand together with the same message that we are standing with the families um, of our 43 missing students. I heard about it in social media, not the news. And to me, that was very upsetting. Um, I thought it was an outrage that this wasn't getting attention. It deserves that 43 lives lost. Uh, they didn't think it was worth putting in the news. And even more so that they thought they could that the government, local government, could do that and that no one would care. They thought they could disappear 43 students, young men with promising futures, and that no one would care. What we've seen is a, a, a dramatic and grotesque deterioration of morality uh, in the business of, of narco traffic. And, uh, you know, it has, uh, it has terrorized and, and horrorized, you know, the people of Mexico. I think as a, a person of Mexican ancestry living in the United States, we, we suffer for Mexico, we suffer for our mother our motherland. Um, you know, it's, things are very different there now. There's, there's a lot of fear. It's a whole new twist on fascism because now you have a, a fascist state that is uh, eliminating the possibility of protest in Mexico using its, its most uh, dangerous criminals to enforce its policies. And so, uh, you know, it, it's for, for, for me personally, it's baffling. It's baffling how things have become uh, so so corrupt and so complex and so far-reaching. I feel what happened in Mexico is something that is something that is a, a global problem right now, um, as far as policing and government uh, abuse of power. Um, and so I feel that this is um, it, it's a travesty to say the least. But I think. This has also spawned a really great movement for people to understand that there is um, a great injustice happening at this very moment. The people of Mexico, I would just say, you know, our hearts go out to you and your families. And, you know, we are connected with you. We are together and we feel that pain and we will be right by your side in the struggle. And uh, we love you. We would just like to say to the, um, the people of Mexico, the students of Escuela Normal, the families of the missing students, the friends of the missing students, that without borders and miles away in San Diego, we are side by side with you. Um, miles and borders don't matter. We're next to you, we're fighting with you, and we're for you. San Diego está presente. Sentimos su dolor y ya basta. Estamos hartos también. Tu lucha es mi lucha. The spirit of the Mexican people is invincible. The people will will change things over time. You know, they have to continue to be courage, uh, courageous. They have to continue to organize themselves and continue to act as they're doing all over Mexico. So uh, we, we need to support them as, as people on this side of the border. As the search goes on for the missing students, mass graves are being found all around Iguala. This brings to light the grisly fact that the kidnapping and murder of Mexican citizens have been going on for some time. Outraged Mexicans who are fed up with escalating violence and corruption have taken to the streets demanding justice. Huge protests have occurred in Mexico City and Chilpancingo, the capital city of the state of Guerrero. Despite the worldwide public outcry, the government has yet to provide a coherent response or resolution. Additionally, it's unclear to what extent the federal government knew about the abduction on that fateful day in September. It has recently been reported by the Mexican magazine Proceso that the Mexican federal police knew about the kidnapping as it was happening, yet did nothing to stop it. Furthermore, allegations are surfacing that the federal police actually colluded with the local police in the disappearance of the students. As someone born in Guerrero, I find this story profoundly disturbing. 
I remember a time when people could go out at night and not be afraid of being robbed, kidnapped, or murdered by the drug cartels. There was still corruption going on, but it was nowhere near the horrific scale it has devolved into. For now, the narcos rule the night, but I believe soon there will come a day when a new dawn will rise over Mexico and the instigators of this narco government nightmare will be buried in the ashes of their own greed and depravity. In the meantime, a huge question remains, where are the students?